In the world of professional software development, Docker is basically a must-have and used in many different ways. This video is the first part of a series about Docker and in today's video I will show you the essential things about Docker so that you also understand what Docker is and how it works. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 10 years. I'm self-employed and run a company that does programming, data science and DevOps since at some point you also want to deploy your awesome machine learning model into production. First of all, let's start with explaining what Docker actually is and why you should strongly consider using it. Docker is a virtualization software that allows you to run very small and optimized virtual machines. Some of you may be familiar with software like VirtualBox or VMware. You can think of Docker as a very stripped down, lean and very fast version of those it consumes much less uh, resources and is usually specific to one task, like for example, running a web application. The main benefit of Docker is that you are able to create an isolated environment with all the dependencies of your software encapsulated in one nice package. This is handy in various use cases. Like if, for example, you don't want to clutter your local machine with all the libraries required from all your projects. or you want uh, an easy way to deploy your servers to some sort of cloud provider like AWS or Google Cloud, or in debugging scenarios where you are trying to replicate some error or malfunction, with Docker you can be sure that you get the exact same runtime behavior as on the server, because you can use the exact same image with the exact same dependencies installed. Therefore, you should be able to reproduce the issue much more easily. Let's talk about how Docker works and introduce some vocabulary used when talking about Docker. The key difference between Docker and virtual machines is that Docker uses the core Linux operating system from the host through some sort of abstraction and only adds the required libraries in an isolated environment for your application. This makes Docker so much leaner and faster than typical VMs. But now you may ask, but I use Windows 10 or Mac OS, not Linux, what the hell? When you install Docker for those platforms, Docker installs a Linux VM secretly, which is then used to run the containers. That's also the reason why you need Hyper-V support on Windows to be able to run Docker, since this is the VM used to run it. And the same secret VM approach is also true for macOS. For Windows, there's also another possibility to run Docker, and this is WSL2. WSL2 is a Linux subsystem for Windows, which basically enables you to run a version of, for example, Ubuntu alongside of Windows. This is, by the way, also the approach which I use in my daily work. I'm currently also thinking about creating a video about how I set up my Windows workstation for development and data science. So if you are into that, please let me know in the comments. Let's try to visualize the structure of Docker and how Docker works and also introduce some Docker vocabulary. In the context of Docker, you will hear and read the terms engine, image and container quite often. So let's see how Docker works, what those terms actually stand for and how this is different from virtualization approaches like VirtualBox and VMware. First, let's explain the differences between Docker and VMs. So, you have the hardware layer, which is the same for both. The hardware layer is basically your workstation or laptop where everything runs on. Then you have your host operating system. This is the version of Windows, Mac OS or Linux that you are running as your primary operating system. Now the differences begin. For Docker, you now have the Docker engine, which is the Docker runtime that is able to run Docker containers and create them. In the VM approach, you have the hypervisor. The hypervisor is an abstraction layer over the hardware, which enables the virtual machines to run their virtual operating systems. On the Docker side, you now have your applications. And on the VM approach, you have your guest operating systems, which is a complete whole separate installation of an operating system like Windows, macOS or Linux. And the application then runs inside of this operating system, like the guest operating system. 
To make things more clear, let's introduce some color. So in the VM approach, those are the two virtual machines. So there is the virtual machine one and the virtual machine two. And on the Docker side, those are the two containers that are running in your Docker engine. And Docker basically works by, uh, you have an image somewhere in a registry like Docker Hub, the Docker engine pulls this image and then materializes it into a container which then runs your application. So to make things more clear and wrap things up, there are three terms in the world of Docker that you need to understand. The first one is the Docker engine. The engine is basically the runtime, also often called the Docker daemon. You install it on your local machine or any other machine you want to use Docker on. It is usually a daemon process that runs in the background and is responsible for running your containers. Another term is the term Docker image. An image is a immutable, so it's read-only file that contains all libraries and dependencies specified during its creation. Because of this, it is read-only, you can be sure to get the same result if you run the same image on different machines. This is one of the biggest selling points of Docker. Those images are created using a Docker file, which is basically a manifest that describes how to build this specific image. And then there are the containers. So Docker containers are materialized images that run on the Docker engine. Containers usually have some sort of state and cannot exist without an image. Now that we know how Docker is generally structured and how it works, let's talk about an important concept used with Docker images. The Docker images use a layered approach, which enables high efficiency by caching and reusing layers that are already present and haven't changed. Okay, let's break things down a bit. A bit earlier I said something like, when you build a Docker image. And now I'm talking about layers, so let's get a bit deeper into more detail here. How image creation in Docker works is basically, you first create a Docker file. I already have created one, which is this one. Um, I won't explain uh, the Docker file now because I will cover it in depth in the next video, but this is the Docker file that we will use. And the second step is you run the command docker build minus t dot and this one uh, you need to run in the same directory in which the docker file is uh, located and if you run it then you see that the image will be built when you execute the build command you see that docker builds layers every command that you have in your docker file results in one layer added uh, to the image. So you see, this is one command, one layer, one layer, and another layer. And when you change something in your Docker file and rebuild it, then only the layer that has changed and all layers following the change will be updated due to the caching Docker uses. As you see here, everything is cached since I already uh, built this image before. But if I happen to go to the Docker file and change something, um, yeah, let's say I'll just change the name here and I rebuild, then you see that everything is using the cache uh, up to the point where I changed it and then those layers get rebuilt and those are not using the cache anymore. <clears throat> then there are also other optional steps depending on your use case, like for example, uploading your Docker image to a registry, but we, keep, uh, but we skip those for now since they are not that relevant for this tutorial. So when you do those two steps, then you have your first Docker image locally in your registry. You can type docker image ls 
to list all the images that you have currently in your local registry. So now that we know why Docker is awesome and how Docker works and also know some vocabulary around Docker, we are ready to go deeper. In the next video, I will explain in detail how to create your own Docker images and also show examples on how to use pre-created Docker images. If you liked the video, it would be great if you would leave a like or subscribe to my channel. Be notified when new content is released. Also, it would be super awesome if you would consider hitting that bell icon. See you in the next video.